and Vice President of Marketing at eFolder and your host for today's event. Welcome to the eFolder Expert Series. This webinar series brings together experts from eFolder's staff and partner community for deep dive discussions on key service, business, and technical topics. Today's topic, New Anchor Marketing Tool, How to Sell with Playbooks. Today we are joined by Carlo Tapia, Marketing Coordinator at eFolder. In just a moment, I will further introduce Carlo. Before we go through the agenda, let's cover a few housekeeping items. Today's session is being recorded. The recorded version of the webinar will be made available on eFolder's YouTube channel. Whoops, let's see here, let me back up. Oops, what's going on here? Let's back up here. Um, it'll be available on eFolder's YouTube channel. We will also make copies of the slides available to those who registered for the event. With over 280 people registered for today's session, we have put all participants in listen-only mode. You can enjoy the audio portion of today's event by either streaming it to your computer or by dialing in over the phone. Questions are strongly encouraged throughout today's webinar. We have planned a special Q&A section at the end of today's discussion, but you may submit them as we go along and we will try to address your questions on the fly. Today's presentation follows a logical flow. First, we will cover best practices and advice for positioning and marketing Anchor and transitioning to a preview of the Anchor Client Awareness Partner Playbook. And we will finish with your questions. Now let me introduce Carlo. Carlo Tapia is Marketing Coordinator at eFolder. Before joining eFolder, Carlo worked at a high-tech B2B public relations, agent, public relations agency where he produced content for companies with more than $20 million in annual revenue and did ghostwriting for VP and C-level executives. Today, he leads outbound email communications with eFolder partners and prospects, heads of the company's media and analyst relations, and is responsible for developing content that promotes and enables partner success. No stranger to the channel, Carlo also interned with Anchor before he was acquired by eFolder while finishing his studies at UC Berkeley's Haas School of Business. Carlo, thanks for joining us and welcome. Thanks for having me. Okay. Um, all right. Well, um, let's get into this. So thanks a lot, everybody, for joining today. So I'm going to start out with some kind of introductory remarks uh, to talk about how um, eFolder partners are being successful today in promoting and marketing um, the Anchor product line. Um, and to, do, to, to understand what was working and not, um, we did some good old-fashioned market research, and we called um, the top 10 partners that are promoting the Anchor product line. And, and we, we determined, determined success by looking at uh, partners that had consumed all of the licenses that they had initially purchased when they signed up for the Anchor product line. So they had driven high levels of utilization um, of the licenses they had already paid for, and they were driving good levels of client adoption. And what we wanted to know was what was working, what was not, well, you know, what were they doing to actually promote the product line and, and what was making them successful. And what I'll do in the next couple of minutes is share with you what we learned. And those insights then went into um, helping us put together the first of several playbooks we're going to be rolling out to partners. But you know, one, we basically discovered a couple different things. Um, and let's walk through those. Um, the first thing we successful partners are doing is they're, they're thinking about the user of this product and the decision maker um, for sync and share in a very broad sort of way. Um, you know, I think one, too often MSPs um, are a little too focused on the top decision maker at your client accounts. And that's a, that can be a challenge because the, the, the business owner or your main contact and account, they may not always be the one who has a finger on the pulse of really what's going on inside the company from their tech, and how their technology is behaving and performing. It's really the frontline users who are experiencing the pain today with uh, you know, troublesome VPN connections, um, inadequate support for people's mobile devices, and the like. And so really, we encourage, we encourage everybody to, to go out there and think about the user broadly and realize that your mission as an MSP is not just to manage the technology of your client. It's really to empower the frontline users. And today we are in a mobile world. Uh, people are bringing their own devices to work. 
they are going to use consumer grade sync solutions if you don't give them a viable alternative that is secure and controllable. And so it's really important to understand what's happening um, broadly at your clients in terms of mobility and how um, work behavior is changing, how the use of mobile applications and mobile devices as such as smartphones and tablets is really changing how people work. And so it's really important to um, market beyond just uh, your key decision maker at your clients. It's important to market to the entire workforce. It's important to tap into other C-level executives who may be in a certain level of pain or may have concerns that employees are using Dropbox on the job or consumer grade uh, sync solutions and are putting corporate data at risk. And it's important just to really think really broadly about the end user community um, to drive adoption of a business class and secure sync solution. Um, the next thing to do is to really, successful partners, they're, they're really in their messaging to clients, they're addressing the Dropbox problem head on. And when we talk about the Dropbox problem, we're talking about the use of consumer grade Dropbox um, in the workplace. Um, there are other consumer grade services like OneDrive and SugarSync and uh, Google Drive and that sort of thing. But really Dropbox is, is the market leader in terms of driving user adoption of a consumer grade service in the workplace. And there's a huge data leakage and security risks because uh, average employees are going out there, they want to be productive on their mobile devices, they want to be able to get their work um, their work content to their home PC so that they can squeeze in an extra half hour or hour of work at the end of the day after the kids have been put down or what have you. And people are trying to be productive wherever they go and they want their files at their fingertips. And they're, they're using consumer grade services, they're putting cor sensitive corporate data into these consumer grade services and they're syncing this data all over the place. And it creates a massive data uh, security risk if people lose devices or they're terminated or they're fired um, or they quit and leave, nobody knows where uh, the data has gone. Um, an article in the Wall Street Journal a couple weeks back described this as file anarchy. I thought that was a pretty appropriate term. And so what we encourage partners to do is really to dr educate your clients, drive awareness of this problem. Um, use other tools that you have at your disposal. For instance, use your RMM tool to audit your client base to understand how widespread Dropbox adoption may be. Uh, one of eFolder's best partners, a um, uh, gentleman by, well, I won't mention his name specifically on this webinar, but we, had an, we have an MSP who's a very savvy player. He's got 3,000 endpoints being managed under Kaseya. And after he adopted the Anchor product line, he used Kaseya to do a, an audit of his installed base. And he found a consumer grade Dropbox on over two thirds of the endpoints that he manages. Um, this MSP is a very sophisticated company. They're a big SonicWall partner. They're security conscious. And nevertheless, here the, here's this problem that has mushroomed right under their noses. So we encourage you to use your RMM tool to understand the scope of the problem. Uh, work with your security vendors, folks like SonicWall or Palo Alto Networks or WatchGuard, and leverage the application security and control capabilities in these firewalls today to block these dangerous consumer grade applications in the workplace. And then replace them with, and then go in and have a conversation with your clients about replacing these services with a business grade and secure alternative. So um, it's really, you know, what we're really uh, emphasizing here is be a trusted advisor, be the security expert, and first educate your clients. And any client who responds to the educational initiative, they're somebody who's primed for a conversation about adopting the Anchor product in their, in their company. Um, the other thing we're seeing that very successful partners are doing is doing client health checks or QBRs. Some people call these technology refreshes. You know, they can be done either monthly or quarterly or half yearly, depending on how large the client is. But when you're in a recurring revenue business model, if you're not checking in to provide reporting and advice and counsel and sensing for problems that are uh, starting to, to, to bubble up, you're not really driving value. You're not really, um, you know, uh, driving value with the client. And so 
client health checks are an excellent opportunity to go in there and discover whether people are having challenges or problems, to go in and sense and discover how widespread the adoption of mobile devices is becoming in your clients, to understand secure, you know, uh, support pain points, and the like. And one thing we really encourage is when you go in and do these uh, client health checks, be sure to, to talk to a broad audience. Don't just talk to the guy writing the checks. Go in and talk to the frontline users and find out how they're really using their technology today, and where they feel like there's barriers to their own productivity. Um, and you'll, you'll be surprised what you discover. There's massive, massive demand for um, business grade uh, sync solutions in your client bases today. And then last but not least, conduct free trials. Once you've done education with your clients, once you've done these client health checks, once you've listened at the top of the organization and at the, at the front lines, you'll discover users who are primed and ready to go to try something different. And what we, what we see as very successful um, opportunities go in and identify a power group of users, people who are going to uh, really engage on a free trial, maybe three to five users. Go in and deploy your version of the Anchor product on a free trial basis. And what you'll discover is within three to four weeks' time, they're unwilling to give the product back. Um, if you do a proper onboarding and a proper training, you'll find that people glom onto this as a solution and their behavior and the way they work starts to really change. Um, and then that, gives, then that gives you an opportunity to really sell the solution to the entirety of the workforce. In our view, virtually every American is going to have an iPhone or an Android device within a couple of years here. So it's all, we're already almost there. So virtually everybody has a smartphone and everybody wants to be productive wherever they go. And so this is not really a executive level only type product. It's a, it's a solution that can really help empower um, people at all levels inside of an organization. And if you do a free trial, it just tees you up to really go in and have that conversation about um, you know, selling the product and the service to the entirety of the company. So with that, um, let's see if there are any questions first before I hand the ball off to Carlo to go through the playbook. Um, uh, uh, let's see here. Let's let's go right into the playbook. Carlo, I'm going to make you the presenter. Okay, great. And Ted, if you could let me know when you see my screen. There we go. I can see the, the playbook in front of me. Go ahead, Carlo. Okay, great. We are uh, we're super excited here at eFolder to uh, introduce and present the Anchor Client Awareness Partner Playbook. As Ted mentioned, this is a playbook that was inspired by the conversations that we had with partners, um, not just recently, but over uh, a period of months and weeks at a time. And, um, and so we think we've really developed uh, a playbook and an asset for our partners to successfully launch uh, their Anchor or FileSync offering. <clears throat> so on that note, let's go ahead and, and jump into it and dive into it. So this first page, or excuse me, the second page here uh, really gives you a feel for how the playbook uh, is to be used and its intended use. Um, every page in the playbook is an asset. So we provided you with <clears throat> we provided you with 18 assets in this playbook um, and more because there are assets, uh, multiple assets. On some pages, there are multiple assets. Um, so this, so on every page, there's three elements. Uh, the first is the title of the asset that we're providing. Uh, the second element is instructions. Uh, and directions and best practices on how to use that asset. And then the third element of every page is the asset itself, uh, which we provide in several formats. So whether it's PDF or a PowerPoint or a doc or a JPEG, uh, you'll find that in the bottom right corner. So in, in, in this example, we have the asset ebook, Seven Risks of Dropbox to Your Corporate Data. We explain how it's supposed to be paired with an email, and we provide it in three different formats. Um, but we'll go over that shortly enough. 
The table of contents gives you an idea of how the playbook is structured and how we envision a partner launching the, uh, their file sync offering. So the first phase is the introduction phase. Uh, and really the introduction phase is your opportunity to educate your clients or prospects and make them aware of your file sync offering. And more broadly, make them aware of file sync. The way that we go about this is an email marketing campaign. So every uh, we have, we provide three emails and three assets, and these assets are then paired with the emails, and you can deliver this to your prospect and client base. Um, and this will make a, you know this is a high level overview, but as we go into each of these parts, you'll really see how. Um, how successful how the how the playbook successfully uh, helps you launch your anchor offering. The second the second part of the playbook is the uh, promotion phase. So how do you talk about the product? How do you illustrate the value and the benefits of a solution like Anchor? Um, so whether it's the way that you describe the product or the way that you blog about the product um, or the way that you even even the way that uh, you present screenshots or, or visual aids of the product, this is what this portion of the playbook uh, is intended for. And then the last phase um, or the last portion of the playbook is the sell. Um, so we provide you with two selling assets um, and one of them is a brochure and a pitch deck and uh, I'll go ahead and, and show the audience what those look like. So the introduction phase, as I mentioned, is designed as an email marketing campaign with three emails and three assets. Um, that's not to say that the assets can't be used in a different way. For example, you could pair the assets uh, with a blog in the future, or you could have them existing on your website. Um, but the way that we structured it was that uh, you would have email copy, um, and, and you would hyperlink to each individual asset. So let me, let me go through this. Uh, this first email is uh, Cloud File Sync Benefits. So the subject of the email is Cloud File Sync Benefits. And when you click on the asset, you see that we've provided you, when you click on the asset, you'll actually be taken to a page uh, to download the asset itself. And if you're an anchor partner, you're very familiar with this screen. So you can download the asset. And when you do that, you'll see that we've provided you with email copy. And we've made it as simple, uh, we've made it so simple that there's really only three areas that you have to fill in. Uh, the client or prospect's first name, your signature line, and then hyperlinking to the asset itself. So this email promotes, uh, if you read the copy, promotes a white paper that's titled Eight Ways to Boost Employee Productivity and Morale with Business Grade File Sync. You would then hyperlink um, that the title of the asset so that your prospects and clients would be redirected to some type of landing page or web form. Uh, you know, you can do this through Constant Contact or MailChimp. And then as they download the asset, you're collecting, uh, you're, you're collecting lead information or you're, you're qualifying your prospects and clients. You know, if you, if you, if you consider that somebody who's downloading a white paper titled Eight Ways to Boost Employee Productivity and Morale with Business Grade File Sync, you understand that they may be ready to start that conversation about Dropbox or about replacing Dropbox or uh, a business grade file sync service such as Anchor. So let's actually take a look at the white paper which we provide. So this is the white paper, Eight Ways to Boost Employee Productivity and Morale with Business Grade File Sync. And we provide any asset that's client-facing, we provide in two different formats. The first format you see here is a PDF. And that PDF is eFolder branded. Um, so you're going to see eFolder white paper. It's dated. It has the uh, copyright eFolder down here at the bottom. And, and uh, you know, an asset that's branded as eFolder or Anchor really doesn't have use for a partner who's trying to brand uh, their own file sync offering. So we've provided it as a PDF just so partners can get an idea for what the asset, how the asset is supposed to be presented, and what it looks like. 
The doc version, however, of the asset is actually completely brandable. And we've actually gone in and replaced any mention of eFolder or highlighted any mention of eFolder so that you can come in here and replace it with your logo. You can swap out eFolder for your company name. You can date it however you'd like. You can change the footers. And this is all done in Microsoft Word, so it's super simple to do. And again, if you read the instructions here, you're going to see that we recommend pairing this white paper with the email on the previous page. Um, and the purpose being that, you're, that anybody who downloads this asset is, is ready to start that conversation. We have another email in the introduction phase that the subject line is Dropbox Risk to Business. Um, so if we take a look at that email, you see that it's around an ebook, and that ebook is seven risks of Dropbox to your corporate data. So again, just like the last email, uh, any person who clicks on this hyperlink and redirects to a web form or some type of landing page uh, to download the asset, you're again qualifying them, and you're you're now presenting them and educating them. Uh, you're educating them on the risks of Dropbox. So I'm going to jump back to the playbook here. So here's the ebook itself that you're going to be hyperlinking to. Uh, you'll see the PDF version, a PowerPoint version, and a doc version. The PDF, once again, is going to be eFolder and Anchor branded. Um, so just so you can see what, how it's supposed to be presented. And then the PowerPoint and doc version is intended to be branded by you, and you can swap out any mention of eFolder or Anchor with your file sync offering name. Uh, and I have, so this is the seven risks of Dropbox to your corporate data. So this is the asset that we provide you with. Um, so you see we cover anything from data theft, data loss, corrupted data, lawsuits, compliance violations, loss of accountability, and loss of file access. And when you think about it, any prospect or any client in any vertical will have at least one of these uh, one of these concerns. If they have anybody who's using Dropbox, any user using Dropbox, um, especially in more sensitive verticals such as uh, you know the medical vertical or legal vertical or even accounting, um, something like comp compliance violations really speaks to some of the concerns that they have. We have a third email in the introduction phase, and so again, uh, speaking to, you know, this being a marketing campaign or an email marketing campaign, some partners choose to structure this as a drip campaign. So with each asset downloaded, you're qual qualifying leads more and more, uh, and you know, even if a partner or excuse me, even if a client or prospect downloads just one asset, they're signaling to you as the partner that there's some interest in file sync, there's some concern that they may have, and it can start the conversation. So how cloud file sync works, um, this is another email that we provide. And there are a lot of users today who are using Dropbox or using Google Drive, but they may not understand, or there's a lot of misunderstandings around how cloud file sync actually works. So a diagram that we provide uh, actually explains how uh, cloud file sync works and gives gives clients and prospects and end users an image of how they fit into the file sync picture, um, how how people that they're sharing with fit into cloud file sync, uh, the different devices that cloud file sync function on, functions on. So whether they're in the office or remote or the file server, how file sync. Um, sort of encompasses all of these different aspects. And again, we've provided, provided this asset in a PDF, a JPEG, uh, PNG, and EPS format, so multiple formats that you can use uh, to brand. So let's get into the promotion phase. As, uh, as I mentioned, the promotion phase is really about how you talk about the product and illustrating the benefits of the product and um, and just some of the activities that you can do. 
So here is a 1050 and 150 word product description. Uh, and this is actually one of my favorite assets in the playbook. And I can pull that up here. So one of the challenges that our partners face is talking about their file sync offering. Um, how do they articulate the value proposition uh, in a concise manner and in maybe a more elaborate manner? And this asset helps them do that. The 10 word description is a one sentence description of Anchor. Then you have a 50 word description, which is a little bit thicker, provides some more context. And then you have a 150 word description, which really elaborates and provides even more context. It speaks to the BYOD trend. It mentions Dropbox. And so whether you're plugging these into your website or a blog or even other assets, this tool is incredibly helpful. We also provide partners with three different blogs. Um, so we have a blog titled Seven Security Risks from Consumer Grade File Sync Services. We have another one, another one, Three Reasons to Cloud Connect Your File Server, and Five Ways to Maximize Employee Devices. So in the first one, um, you know, we have a problem set up. In the second one, we're talking about a feature that's contained in Anchor. And then in the third one, we're talking about a benefit uh, of adopting a business grade file sync service. So three different topics that you can mix into your company blog. And um, I know a lot of the partners that we spoke to actually use syndicated content or work with some outside agency to produce uh, their company blogs and develop content. So this is three more that you can, you can toss into the mix. Some of the partners that we spoke to, and this is actually an idea that we got uh, when calling one of the partners, <coughs> when calling one of our partners, is uh, they have an on, they either have on hold music or uh, they put they put their clients on hold when they call in, especially for support. And this is a great opportunity to talk about the product and just mention that you have it. And so we provide um, you know four little blurbs that you can. Uh, toss into your on hold music or your on hold uh, or things that you're already talking about on hold so that the client when they're um, when they're listening and they're waiting can can ask themselves uh, I, you know I, I heard about your business grade file sync service um, can you tell me a little bit more about that and just preparing your your sales representatives or your support engineers to be able to take advantage of that telephone opportunity Another asset that was highly demanded by partners was some product screenshots, and specifically product screenshots that were not Anchor branded. Uh, for a long time, we had some product screenshots on our website, which gave a good view of the product, but uh, they had the Anchor logo attached to them. So we've gone ahead and taken product screenshots. Um, we've gone ahead and taken some product screenshots that our partners can now let me swap the can now plug into their marketing assets. Um, so we have the Windows 8 Metro screen where you can see the application. And we've provided all of these, we've, we've given you two different forms of every screenshot. So you have uh, a version without callouts. So if you want to add your own caption or your own titles, you can do that. And then we provided you a version with callouts, which talks about the product and gives a little bit of instruction around what the client is actually looking at. And so we go all we provide about 15 of these um, 15 so so total of 30 two different formats of every screenshot and we go through the syncs folder uh, we go through shares um, you know logging in on the web uh, we actually go to the administrative dashboard so a, a lot of times the client doesn't understand the offering until they've really seen it and uh, and that's the case with any any piece of software. And so these product screenshots allow them to visualize um, what the software looks like and how, how they interface with the product itself. The last section here is uh, the sell phase. So you've now educated your clients on Anchor. They're aware of the risks of Dropbox. How do you seal the deal? How do you, what assets do you use 
uh, to really shift the conversation into revenue and into pricing and profitability. So this first asset is a brochure that we've provided and uh, the brochure is, is very neatly and in a very polished manner um, shows clients the five value propositions of Anchor. So I'll take a look at the, uh, the brand version that I've opened here. So you'll see we have access files from anywhere, collaborate with ease, share files securely, control your data, eliminate FTP and VPN, and then we give a features listing, um, our promise, which talks about as your trusted IT service provider, Anchor is the service that I guarantee, um, and here's you can see the, the outside covers. So it's, it's very polished and something that's, that's very easy to print out. And then you can, I'll also show the audience our editable version. So again, we've highlighted all the areas that you can replace and, uh, and swap out the Anchor logo with your logo. Um, and this, is, this, this asset is really great because it's so versatile. Um, it's something that you can have in your office, so when clients visit, they can pick up and take with them. It's something that you can give them during meetings um, that lives on their desk, and if they ever have to reference your file sync offering, they can they can keep this with them. And and moreover, it's it's tangible. Um, it's something that you know you you can never replace, even if you're sending things over the web. Um, you you can't really replace. Uh, an asset like this, which is tangible and again uh, can live on somebody's desk desks for uh, weeks or months at a time. And then finally, we have a pitch deck. So this pitch deck, uh, our thinking around it was that partners now educated their client or their prospect. They're ready to have that conversation. Um, they're ready to have an in-person conversation asset could we provide them uh, to help them present present anchor and what is a traditional and we when we considered what a traditional pitch looks like <clears throat> so this is as, as obviously the the branded version uh, we also provide an editable version so we we start with a problem setup the, we talk about the Dropbox problem, pose some tough questions to the client, so which company files are in, are in employees' Dropbox folders. Um, what do you do when you know, an employee suddenly leaves the company and they have corporate files in their Dropbox folder? So there's really a problem set up here. We then shift into the solution itself. We talk about Anchor. Um, give the client a feel for the product, what they're going to get out of it. Show them the mobile application and how that looks. Um, and really show them how easy it is to use Anchor. And then finally, you know, we, we go into a review slide, talk about the problems, uh, reiterate why Anchor is a better solution than something like Dropbox or a consumer grade service. Present the feature set and then pricing, a pricing, uh, a pricing slide where you can where you can finally make that pitch and push forward the conversation. So these are the, the assets that we've contained in the playbook, and uh, we're excited to roll it out and get your feedback. And I think really when you download the playbook and start to explore these assets and see um, how easy they are to use and brand and distribute to your clients, uh, you're also going to be excited. Yeah, so uh, Carlo, great job walking everybody through that. Let's. Um I'm anxious. To, uh, we've been getting some comments and questions that have been coming in, but let's get more on the table. This is your chance to ask anything um, you want. Um, a couple, uh, I'm going to start just going through some of these questions. Um, Harsha said $25 per user per month, and the, the, the point there is that you can price and package the Anchor solution on a retail basis however you wish. That's the beauty of the approach is we sell it to you for a competitive wholesale price, either as a private cloud or public cloud um, version um, or deployment scenario, and then you decide how you want to price and package the offering. But you know, in our view, 
um, just a comment on the price point of $25 per user per month, is why not? If you're delivering a managed file sync solution to your clients where you're doing the security configuration, you're handling the help desk, you're handling ads moves and changes, you're doing monthly or quarterly technology reviews with the, with the client, you should be charging a premium. The street price today, in our view, for a business grade file sync solution is $15 per user per month. So, um, but the choice is yours. That's the important point. Um, just another real tactical thing uh, that, that Carlo didn't mention there, that there's a, also a page in the playbook at the very end where you can basically click on the zip file and download every single asset in the playbook with one go. Um, so that's another uh, handy feature of the playbook. Um, and then there were several questions coming in that I tried to uh, address um, you know, via the, the Q&A window. But, um, everybody who attended today's session will be getting the playbook uh, sent out to you right after the session. So you'll have it in your hands in no time. So let's dive back into um, um, David wants to know about um, uh, good stuff, uh, but kind of off topic, Ted, but does eFolder have plans to do similarly? And I think, and David, the answer is yes. So um, this playbook concept um, we're going to be rolling out across all eFolder product lines. So we'll have similar sorts of uh, kits of assets for eFolder Backup and eFolder BDR as well. And the other thing we're, we're envisioning is we're actually going to have multiple different playbooks for different product lines. So specifically on the Anchor product line, um, we're going to actually introduce two additional uh, playbooks, one which we're calling the Dropbox Risk Playbook which will be more of an end-to-end -end campaign all around the risks of Dropbox. So there will be some additional assets that will be in that the playbook that aren't in the basic client awareness playbook. And then the other playbook we've envisioned for Anchor as well is what we call the free trial playbook, which is all around how to conduct successful free trials. Um, everything from you know how to use your RMM tool to do an inventory to find out how extensive consumer-grade sync solutions are in your, your client base and so on. So, multiple playbooks for, for different product lines, and we will be, over time, in the next couple of months here, rolling out playbooks across all product lines. So um, let's see here. Let's dive in. Um, I think I addressed Wes's question. Um, let's see here. Um, let's, Carl asks about retail pricing. Let me just reiterate that point. Again, retail pricing is up to partners. And in our view, the street price of a unmanaged business-grade sync solution today is $15 per user per month. And most eFolder and Anchor partners are, are managed service providers. And we, we feel that you can easily charge $15 to $25 per user per month if you're taking on a lot of uh, management and administrative uh, responsibilities on behalf of the client. The other thing a lot of partners are doing is they're viewing you know, business grade sync and share as a standard feature in their overall managed services bundle. And so they're deploying it in some cases out to uh, clients for free, quote unquote, if you will, right now. And then at renewal time, this will be one of the additional capabilities that increase the scope of the managed services contract and we'll, the price will be raised at renewal time. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, I'm just going to dive. Um, so Leo asks, um, will the recent changes to Dropbox be considered in the white paper and e you know additional playbooks? And the answer is yes. Um, one of the one of the assets that we that we have not supplied in this playbook, but are going to feature prominently in future playbooks are competitive comparisons. Um, generally speaking, when we talk about the risks of Dropbox, um, we're talking about the consumer grade version of the product, first and foremost, right? Um, you know, in our view, it's, it's a consumer grade service that's, that's kind of infected, if you will, the workplace, and, uh, you know, poses massive risks. And there's nothing that Dropbox has announced that's gonna change that as a, as a business and security challenge uh, in the workplace going forward. Um, that being said, uh, partners often ask us, hey, we're running up against, you know, Box or Ignite or, you know, competitor XYZ. 
and we're going to be being much more specific and clear on providing you tools that that provide competitive comparisons. Um, um, let's see here. Just uh, there's a lot of questions, so I just want to. Um, Okay, uh, Daniel has a kind of a question and a comment. How about Anchor putting their marketing power to work with a national or regional campaign and having respondents directed to a local partner? I'd be willing to opt into that. Daniel, great feedback. Thank you. It's something we're entertaining. Um, you know, as a company, uh, eFolder and Anchor together, um, we've, we've primarily um, relied on partners to take the message to the client. And from a lot of partners' perspectives, that's the right way to go. It's, um, you know, deliver a service that can be private labeled and, and uh, branded by the partner. Um, so our first wave is really to, to embellish these playbooks and have them across different product lines and to really give partners all the content tools they need to go out and successfully sell and market and promote the product. Next will be, you know, when we do go to market um, to drive end user leads, it's going to be in a sort of clever sort of way where we're still going to be relying exclusively on partners, of course, to own the client relationships. But in our view, the way to be successful in B2B marketing is to educate first and to educate clients. And so you could imagine, for instance, to your point, Daniel, we, you could imagine a nationwide, um, a nationwide lunch and learn series where we go to the end user community and, and target either certain verticals or business users and then go and do lunch and learns where eFolder does all the heavy lifting, but we have a local partner in every lunch, and the partner gets all the leads that come out of the lunch. So that, that's a, one idea we've been kicking around a little bit. So I appreciate the feedback. Um, William asks about comparisons with other uh, file sync offerings. So yep, more on the competitive front coming. Um, uh, let me just keep looking here. Um, so Carl wants to know, you know, what is the entry process? Is there a ramp up process to meet commitment objectives? So basically, for those of you who are on the line who um, are not yet using the Anchor product line, um, we'd love to get you on board um, and get you started. Um, the minimum commitment is 25 users uh, per month. And that 25 users can be used in any combination across your client base. You could have one client with 25 users, or you could have you know, five with five. Um, so split it up however you want. But um, everybody who was invited today is an existing eFolder partner. So you may be deploying backup in BDR and then you know, kind of uh, kicking the tires a bit on the anchor solution. Um, maybe now is a really good time to get in the boat, so to speak. Um, uh, but the, the minimum entry point is 25 users per month. And uh, most partners, though, come in at somewhere around 100 users per month because the, when you buy more um, on your initial deployment, you get a better price and you lock in a very attractive wholesale price for when you go from you know, 100 to 101st user and beyond. Um, let's see here. Uh, Harsha wants to know, is the cloud storage provided by you or do we need to configure our own cloud storage? So that's more of a and a deployment uh, question. Um, just in general, one of the things that makes the Anchor product line pretty unique is that uh, partners can adopt the product in a private cloud fashion. So you can put it in your own data center and provision your own storage. Um, most partners do adopt the what we call the SaaS version of the product. And in the SaaS version of the product, we, in, we include 100 gigabytes per user per month, um, which is aggregated at the partner level. So you know, if you have 100 users, you have 10 terabytes. And then it's up to you how you actually allocate the storage quota down at the account and user level. Um, let's see here. So again, Daniel, we will, Daniel's question is, how soon can I get my hands on the playbook? Everybody who attended today, we're going to be emailing it out shortly. Um, Owen wants to know, any chance of setting up customized branded websites we could send to our prospects? Um, not yet, Owen. I, I, I think the, the, the next evolution of the playbook in our, our, our mind is to do um, video and demos on demand content. So you could imagine a, um, a guided video demo of the product that's done in a brand neutral sort of way. 
where it would be a there would be like a short demo and a long demo and you would be able to share that with your clients and the, the person the talking head the person the 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 e folder se who's actually doing the tour wouldn't say the word anchor anywhere he would say our business grade sync solution or our uh, business sync tool and he would speak in a generic sort of way and then that would allow you to go out to your clients and use that so we envision demos on demand as a natural evolution of the playbook um, and then the other thing we're we're kicking around a little bit is to is to produce a similar sort of generic again uh, animated animated content so you know understand cloud file sync in a minute or less you know so you watch an animated video and we would perhaps have the ability to put for you to put your brand at the beginning and the end as bookend and in the middle the content would be kind of generically branded or neutral um, so anyway, some additional things coming down um, the line and I'm getting some good feedback in the Q&A log on that so um, let's see here so Jay wants to know um, how do I set up a breakfast or lunch and learn how do we uh, I know I've emailed in the past but haven't heard anything well Jay in our view um, you know what we've shared in this partner playbook gives you kind of a continuum of uh, assets that are different parts of the sales cycle. The, the stuff at the front, the intro stuff, I mean, we're sometimes shocked that we come across partners that haven't, they'll adopt a product and they don't even send out an email to their clients to say they've got some new technology capability. And so what we really encourage everyone to do is educate, you know, promote to your clients by educating them. Send them interesting content. Send them white papers. Send them e-books. And when they download that stuff, then you've got suspects. All you know is that they're interested in the problem, and then if you fast forward, a, a more uh, you know a more uh, down the funnel type of sales tactic is to do a seminar, and the the PowerPoint presentation we've supplied today could be paired with the risks of Dropbox presentation together in a single presentation, and you could go out and do um, do a lunch and learn on your own today. Uh, with these assets, and we highly encourage that. I mean, eFolder, we do, we're doing 50 or 60 lunch and learns a month right now. Now, admittedly, you know, we're a vendor and we've developed this capability over time, but you could spend anywhere from a thousand to two thousand dollars and get 10 to 20 prospects in a room and educate them about the risks of Dropbox, and that is a rock solid uh, way to promote your business. Educate your clients. You could do existing prospects and new pro, you know, your house list and new clients and uh, it's it always pays out you just go to the Morton Steakhouse or the Ruth's Chris and pick the fanciest restaurant and it it always pays out we find if you pick a nice restaurant and educate your clients first um, let's see here um, Tony wants to know what uh, what executable name should our RMM, RMM tool be looking for uh, to find the Dropbox application. That's a pretty deep technical topic, but with something we will address in the free trial playbook because these RMM audits are, is, is, is a, something that's definitely cropped up as a great uh, sales and marketing tactic. Um, okay. Um, there's so many questions, it's kind of hard to pick. Um, So Sebastian wants to know how to how to deal with a client that has an IT person and they go straight to eFolder or Anchor and sign up as a reseller. Well, Sebastian, um, eFolder does not sell to end users. So if we get somebody who you know calls up and says, "Hey, I'm a hundred person medical practice," we say, "Thank you very much. Um, let us connect you with one of our partners in your, your local market." So. So we don't we don't do any business direct. eFolder and the Anchor products are sold exclusively through MSPs and VARs, and we are now approaching almost a thousand partners uh, doing business on the Anchor product line. So um, no worry there. Um, and the way the multi-tenant management portal um, on Anchor is configured, you're able to um, give uh, companies that have an IT department select administrative access to certain aspects of the the anchor solution. Um, uh, 
Um, let's see here. Um, uh, there's a question David wants to know, could we also get uh, the initial slides that went along with today's presentation? And the answer to that is yes. We'll do that as well. Um, Douglas says, I really want videos on demand and animation for our website. So great feedback. Thank you, everybody, uh, for the feedback on that part of the, the topic. Um, let's see here. So Harsha says, um, also right now we are using eFolder for all of our customers, around 30 users. What's the difference between eFolder and Anchor? Um, let me just briefly comment on that. It's a, it's a pretty big uh, topic, but um, the Anchor product line has a file and folder level uh, backup capability. Um, it, it's different than the eFolder backup capability. Um, it's good for kind of uh, laptop backup, for instance. It can't do open file backup, and it can't do scheduled backup. So um, generally speaking, you can make a kind of a top-level generalization that eFolder backup is great for servers and server applications and anytime you need more really sophisticated backup procedures like scheduled backups or the ability to backup open files. And then the Anchor backup capability, which is included at no extra charge, is really good for um, doing you know backup of, of, of like laptop computers. So, um, so, so today, really, eFolder's three big product lines are eFolder Backup, eFolder BDR, and Anchor. Okay. Um, Carl wants to know, does Anchor uh, integrate with Autotask and ConnectWise? And the answer to that is yes, on both cases. Um, let's see here. Um, Carlo, any other questions that you see? See, we, I mean, there's lots of questions, but we're kind of running out of time here. Let me just check the time. Come no, I, I would just say that as partners go out with this playbook and start delivering the assets, keep the feedback coming. Um, Ted, if you want to skip over to the next slide. Uh, yeah, let me do that. So there's my... Uh, there's my contact information, and you can reach out to either Ted, uh, Ted or I, and uh, and we would love to hear your feedback uh, about how the product is being used, assets that you would like to see included in the next version of the playbook, because um, this is you know it's an it's an evolving it's an evolving asset, and um, and so we look forward to seeing uh, your success and uh, and making improvements. Yeah, and I think the, the other comment I would make is please uh, share with us what you're doing. Show us a the pitch deck rebranded with your own logo. Show us the brochure with your your branding and your name. Show us an email campaign you did. I mean, and, and really, to us, the best support and feedback you can give us is to show us you're using using these tools and actually getting out there and, and, and being successful and spreading the message. Um, you know, I think everybody's in violent agreement that, you know, marketing is not one of the strongest suits of MSPs and, and channel partners. And what we're trying to do here is simply save you time, you know, help you to get started. You've got to take it across the finish line. You've got to take, show the initiative to get stuff out there. And uh, that's the, you know, that's the investment you need to do to own client relationships. But hopefully we've, we've gotten you to 80% of where you need to be. And we're going to continue to invest aggressively in this area to help partners be successful. So with that, um, you've got Carlo's information there. If you've got any uh, roll up your sleeves type feedback, you can reach out and reach out and call him on the phone or email him. And I just want to thank everybody for taking the time today for today's webinar to introduce uh, the first eFolder partner playbook. There's more to come. And thanks a lot for making the time for us today. Take care now. Thank you.